Welcome friends, I'm going to share with you my 2024 roadmap recommendation to become the best 3D data expert or innovator. So basically, I will share with you a seven step process that will tap onto the best resources, the best way to align the resources with one another and the best tech stack to make sure that you are equipped with tools and knowledge to achieve the goals that you set yourself up to. If you're ready, without further ado, let's dive onto the depth first approach. Let us now go through the 3D roadmap and the seven step plan that I designed to make sure that you have the best accompaniment as possible, right? Let's unveil step one, which is very simple. It's identifying the underlying goal levers. I will not here speak about goal per se. There are a lot of uh, ways to set goals to use that. Here, I just want to make sure that we identify this little B component, which is where we want to go. And A is where we are now. So you are someone super happy and ready to attack 2024, but you don't know exactly which way you should take to have this expertise or so-called expertise in 3D data processing, 3D data science, you name it. So let's first focus on, on, on the levers. Um, what will help us go there, which is this little B. And inside that, you usually have several ways that you can approach where you want to go, so the end of the journey. So first is, usually people will want to contribute to change, to something. You want to innovate, you want to change something that is not working for you, or you think you have a better way to solve a, a challenge. So that would be one possibility. The second thing is you are looking for more flexibility in your life, you more flexibility in what you want to design, in your system, or you want to be a bit more challenged, which is usually very important to make sure that we have a lot of fun along the way. The third element that may resonate with you is opportunities. Did you saw something or a shift in the market or something where you think you have a great card to play? And I can tell you here in the 3D space, uh, we are at the beginning and there will be a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities. So it's the best time to jump right on board in 2024. Another element that we may consider also is security. You want to have something which is a bit more secured when it comes to your life or, or what you want to build. And finally, of course, uh, there is the money gain, the finance gain, and that's also a lever. Usually, people, where they will set uh, themselves to something, they will want to act within one of these categories. So already at this stage, knowing where you fall into will help you decide which way will be the best one. But when I say way, it's uh, exactly what I mean. It's not usually very easy to identify this straight out of the bar. That's the step two, identifying what we are seeking. And here, the most straightforward way to go to B, the goal, right, with our current situation A, will be a straight line going from A to B with a linear progression between levels. Kind of in a video games, you are starting a noob and at the end you want to be the master boss. But of course, that's also an emphasis. That's where usually you get bored because everything is so simple and you need more challenge. So challenge is a key component to progress uh, your or monitor your progress, let's say. And you can have like an experience bar wherever you, you have a level identified you will go to the next level. So this is something that I really like to have whenever I teach or I do things is to have this uh, gamification approach to, th uh, to, to the overall vibe of learning. The third element is to make sure you are aware that this is a theory, this is a dream, this straight line, but it's usually never like this. Because you have a lot of elements um, that spans out of your context or spans out of the tech evolution, especially in the 3D world, that will make your path not a straight line, but usually it will go in and out and around and um, through different places to arrive to your specific initial goal, which may have evolved uh, along the way, by the way. Pun non intended. So here, it's very, very important to understand that. Then the fourth element is what I will call or the expertise buckets. And I designed that to help you grow in a sustainable manner. Basically, we have three buckets when it comes to 3D tech and innovation and setting up your roadmap where you want to start, depending on your level and your specific coding level. So as you can see below, we have a coding level requirements and these buckets will fall there. These requirements are not at the end of the journey, but at the beginning. If you have no coding knowledge, especially Python, you will go on the left side. If you have a large coding knowledge, especially with 3D AI and um, R&D, you can fall onto the right category. But that's just one element of the skills needed, uh, else the rest is built along the way. So the first, the first bucket is 3D creators. So here, it's really about wanting to create 3D stuff, either at the data acquisition phase or generating some kind of, uh, of, of elements. And that usually does not need a lot of coding uh, involved, at least for starting, but you have a lot of growth with coding. The second bucket, will, I will call them the 3D systemers. So here, 
will go inside engineers, managers that want to create system that work in production or system that, that really solve identified challenges, right? So it's the full pipeline. And then the third bucket is something that is a bit top notch or cutting edge, where you don't really are, are not really interested about building system, but you, you really want to like push a bit more the research on a specific front or re-implement some kind of research that is super, super new using AI and other paradigms that are coming out very, very uh, strongly right now. If you want to be called an expert, a 3D expert, you need to master all these three buckets. But this can be done in parallel or linearly, depending on how you approach things. But basically, these buckets are separated and you will have intervention from one to the other or linearly, but they could be followed in uh, various ways. Then let's move on to the fifth element, which is the main modules in the processing pipeline, what we need to be or to take care of. And uh, for that, this is an example taken out from uh, the book that I'm writing currently, which gives you the main elements that we approach in 3D data science and uh, 3D data processing, where you can see that depending on the bucket where you fall in, you will still touch all of that. So the 3D data acquisition uh, will then span out to data preparation. There you have two main phases, pre-processing the data and being able to re register the data. Then you span out something, what I call exploration or experiment here. Yeah, you want to inject semantics to model a bit and to structure your data. Once that is done, we move on to data analysis, where we'll have tasks related to optimization or monitoring. And then we span out and go into visualization, further down the line, having an application development, right? So that is the full, um, let's say, modules on which you will be able to act at various level. Right, now we can move on to the sixth element to this 3D roadmap 2024, which is coding. Hold on here one second. Usually creating these pieces of content and knowledge would take me between four to eight hours just to design the ID before editing and things like this. Subscribing to the channel or leaving a comment takes two to three seconds, but it makes a huge impact on what I can deliver next and which project I attack, which direction I want to tune the teachings and the course and the code and the content that I give you. So please, if you believe this is useful to you or someone else around the world, don't hesitate to subscribe, to share or to leave a comment. That means a lot to me. I usually read a lot of them, at least at this stage, so I will continue in this fashion. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the video. A core component on all of this is Python and 3D Python. It's very important to grasp all of that. And um, I talk about the choice of the OS, the environment setup or the ID setup, the base library, the 3D libraries, how to visualize and export, download, import 3D models. All of that usually go through, you see a classical pipeline that I teach as part of the 3D Deep Learning course at the 3D Data Academy, where we set up everything for you. But basically, this is a core component to have if you want to upscale from beginner to an expert at any case, at any stage within the journey, you will need to dive into 3D Python for sure. Hopefully, and that's where I want to go, that's my uh, seventh step, which is how I approach things. I have already designed from experience a number of resources right? Whether it's through the courses, the teaching that I do, or, or other elements. But now I want to be a bit more custom. And what I like to, to do is like approach things like your doctor. If you do not give me the real problem, I cannot solve uh, the real problem. So that's where it's very nice that we have this community where we can exactly pinpoint some specific challenges that we can address. And here, usually, as you can see, on the channel, my aim is to open up courses and tutorials that will solve specific points, either that I identified or that you have a problem with. And I do that on a weekly basis. So I touch on all these uh, seven components, so acquisition, pre-processing, registration, semantization, structuration, modeling, visualization, and application, where usually I will always have something that is scientifically illustrated, dynamic. I focus a lot on Python for 3D. I try to have a minimal amount of library and a low level view to keep your creativity intact, whether you're in the scientific domain or in the application domain. So that is what you can rely on as part of the resources that are available to you to help you on your journey. And here, I divide it on two categories, uh, which is basically the free open stuff and the paid stuff, right? So I really like this view because the paid will actually contribute to the free and the free will contribute to the paid, which is sustainable. And my goal is to move as much as possible in the free domain, but still uh, keep uh, what is, let's say, production system, things that gives a lot of value to companies uh, in the paid uh, part of things. 
Right, so on the standalone side, that's the free stuff. I identify something and I make sure that you have the full view for a specific topic. So you have Medium. I can give you the link just down below. You will find that where you have tutorials. If you like this way of learning, so it's text-based learning. YouTube, where I aim to have video-based learning system. And then uh, with various universities, whether it's University of Twente or Liège or other ones, uh, I will do the research and the um, physical courses, right? But I compiled everything within the newsletter, so feel free to subscribe to that if you want to be up to date. I usually do not spam, but it's good to know what is there. And the second aspect, I think, is the production systems. If you are already deep enough and uh, um, have enough clarity that you know you want to build something useful or for the next innovation or for the next startup, then you have several courses, books, or I act as an advisor for uh, large companies. And that's the second option where, yeah, that should contribute to your roadmap for 3D advancement in 2024. Here are some examples already um, for starting already your journey, right? If you want to start with a full view of 3D LiDAR workflow, this 3D Python workflow for LiDAR City model, a step-by-step -step guide uh, made with ITC will be your best friend. And here I regroup with my fellow professor at the ITC Twenter to create a very, very straightforward guide from uh, that, that go from A to B, the goal being able to develop such a multimodal application. Then we can move a bit deeper in the segmentation and clustering. And here again, with my uh, friend and colleague, Ville Letolla, we designed this segment anything model for 3D point cloud um, tutorial that will make sure that you can use some from Meta AI to develop segmentation routines. Another element touching on classification and semantics was made with Sander Ude Elbrink, which is also a colleague at ITC Twent, Professor there. And here we designed a tutorial on 3D deep learning Python using PointNet. And this is the part about preparation, how you prepare that to fit the PointNet architecture. Another one which is interesting is 3D point cloud shape detection for indoor modeling. If you want to uh, go on to several ways to model your indoor area environment, this is a very nice way also to experiment that. Be aware that each of the species, they are not aimed to low depth um, application, but they are really aimed at giving you the full process. And usually the reading and understanding time will fall between 30 to one hour. The replication time will fall within one hour as well. And then after, if you want to extend from it, you double by two or more if you want to really go beyond that. But that's the way it's structured, right? And finally, if you want to become or accelerate this path or make sure that you have a lifetime support, a Discord community, updates and so on, you have courses that falls within the buckets, right? Whether creator, system years, which are engineer and manager, or AI and research, which is study research and professor. That is the best way to move forward is to go to the academy and basically choose the course that suits your need at the moment. And that's it, guys. Um, and that's it, guys. That is the 3D roadmap for 2024. There's seven steps will help you go onto exactly what you intend to do. So please, at this stage, um, I'm super happy to make sure that I'm there along the way to give you valuable resources, things that are very robust stand the test of time and that will help you on this journey. If you are not yet a subscriber, uh, that will mean a lot to me if you just subscribe to the channel, if you want more things like this, of course, and more tutorials, you can share that with the world if that's even uh, something that we do today. And in the meantime, have a great week and see you next time. Bye bye.